a touch low on clearance. How do two sensors take a crap at the same exact time? Defender, maybe a little more backwards than just back. That is right, we tore the front end back off to give us a little more room to work with. We got a bit over there, a bit here, some more there. I gotta say, I am loving having the space to blow this thing back apart without tripping over everything. It's been years. It does seem a little counterproductive to pull everything back off, but the next few projects on the Defender are gonna be much easier with a little more space. A little bit ago, we lightly bolted up all the body panels just to make sure we had what we needed, but now it's actually time to lock everything into place. I wanna make the new floors up, so therefore I wanna get the bulkhead in its final resting spot, which means we need to set the door gaps for real. Went ahead and got the tub in its spot, working our way forward, like I said last video. With the tub in place, we set up the sill channels and made sure those are mounted square against the tub. So we got the back lined up. Now we just need to set the bulkhead in place. If this is square and this is square, we just need distance. And thanks to Mike from Britannica, we make that easier with this guy. This is 34 and 3 quarters inch long, and as you can see, it is the super duper Defender door gapper thingy. It's mainly so I don't throw it in the burn pile on accident, but instead of running a tape measure across all the time, we can just use this guy to check whether or not we are gapped right. So down here we are good. Up top, bulkhead needs to go forward. This is a much easier task without the front wings in place, jamming anything up so we can move the bulkhead a little more freely into place. And once the bulkhead is exactly where we need it, the doors will fit nicely, everything will be square and correct distance. We can bolt the seat box back into place. Then we can make up our new floors and finalize our transmission tunnel with everything at the correct distance. Because if our bulkhead was a quarter inch off, our floors would be a quarter inch off. Shocking, I know. Just like how Sasha is about one Sasha away from the bed. So the way to the door is pulling the top of the bulkhead back because I don't have the front brace on yet because I want to get everything lined up first. So I have my high tech adjustment piece. Starting to look fairly on point there. We can't really bother with the gap on the windshield frame because that's not attached to anything. But we got a nice even gap front and rear. Box height and bulkhead height are pretty well matched. Pull the door flush here and you can see we are looking good. Front and rear. We're gonna have a tiny bit of body work to do on the bulkhead, but that is to be expected with the galvanized one. We gotta work out some of the rough galvanizing surface. Got a tiny bit of a dip right here. You can see the edge of the door there, right there. But we can probably get that massaged out from the backside here some. Then that should be good to go. But that is pretty smooth looking there. Nice and consistent all the way down, front and rear. Hopefully we can do it on the other side. That right there, gonna be pretty nice. We'll obviously have a tiny bit of finessing to do when we get to the bodywork stage, but for some brand new doors, new bulkhead, and the original tub, that's looking pretty good. We're gonna have a nice, clean looking defender there. And quit working. Yeah. 
This one doesn't have the dip that the driver's side has. And see, we disappear pretty easy. But once again, got the height set front and rear. On this side, we're gonna have to adjust the tub a little bit. We kind of got a dent right here. So I'll have to work that out. I'm actually really pleased with how the doors are lining up once we actually go at it here. This is gonna go together nicely. Now that the doors are in place, we can get to what I was actually trying to do. And that's to mess with all this stuff. The floors have seen some better days, especially this one. But those guys will need to be adjusted because the transmission tunnel had to be modified for that nice little six speed GM transmission. So instead of trying to straighten these out, rework those, we are just gonna start fresh. And that is why I wanted the bulkhead to land where it is ultimately gonna be. So the new ones of those are gonna be correct. Man, I do really like how the little cooler pack turned out. We got everything all in one little unit, but we can also get a little better look at that rear fan shroud now that it's out of the way. Just makes me happy how that all turned out. We got the box roughly bolted in place. We need to do some trimming on it though. Something in this neighborhood. So this is originally an LT77 truck. It has a narrower transmission tunnel. I'm not sure which transmission tunnel is the widest, whether it's the R380 or the automatic or whatever. But it's definitely not the LT77. If you know which one has the most space, comment down below. We're gonna modify this one. Make it fit that six speed. And it's coming back out. Well, this thing's just freaking great. That's hokey as all get out. We'll have to see some adjustment on that guy. And we're going back. This used to be the passenger side floorboard, but it is now the driver side. And this one is fairly close to what we need. Uh, we'd have to knock the corner off there, do a little bit more tweak in here and there, but it would work. But being it's pretty chooched out, we are just going to make a new one. This will serve as a decent template to start with on the driver side or the left hand side. The transmission tunnel will remain the same. But on the right hand passenger side, that is a completely different story. We have some clearances to make. Passenger side floorboard is in much better shape. But if we set that guy in there, you will see we need to lose about four inches. So we're probably going to go from somewhere in this vicinity to about that vicinity. Essentially, this part will no longer be there. We're going to have a bump out on the transmission tunnel that we'll have to make. So what is essentially going to happen here is we are going to probably slice this whole side off. So our order of operations here is we are going to get these cut and clearance to where they need to be. Then we'll get our floor panel made and then that will give us where we need to make our new flange on both of the transmission tunnel pieces and then we can make our little hump. So I got my super accurate scribbles on there. Crossed a couple bolts in the transmission tunnel. You can see the massive amount of clearance we made. So now we just need to make a couple templates for the floor itself. I'm going to go to this point here and straight across. Then when we build onto the transmission tunnel, we'll come down and we will have a flange that overlaps the floor itself. On the driver's side, we're in good shape. So we just pretty much need to template off of that and just a couple tweaks up in this area for the difference in the firewall from the factory one. So since we have the original floor pan, I'm going to start off with that 
and modify it. I'm going to use some cardboard. Cardboard is cheaper than aluminum, so we'll get our fit up with that. We are a touch tight up here yet. Right there is looking pretty good. We're properly gapped all the way around. I just need to nick that corner a little bit. We have our bolt head clearanced. That should work out nicely. And we can take this baby for a ride. Someone decided to join us. Climb up here. So we got a couple floorboards designed here. We just need to get these into some aluminum. And then once we have the aluminum in there, we will mark them from the back side and we can punch all our holes in, get these fastened into place, and then fabricate the transmission tunnel. Gonna eat up a tiny bit of leg room on this side, but that won't matter. We got plenty over here. Look at sitting comfortably, not in the way at all. So I was going to transfer these over and draw them up and get them into the computer on a file that we can send over to the little bro to get them cut out. May just do it by hand. It's a fairly simple shape. And while we are at it, I'm going to template out the new C notch for the C10. And this should work. If we flip it for the other side, we're just gonna make some of them. And there will be our much more reasonable height notch. Plenty of up travel, and we'll have much more usable bed space. So there are the pieces we need to get cut out. Those two out of aluminum, a couple of those out of steel. I mean, technically four of them. That one, that one, that one, that one. <laughs> If you ever wanted to know why you should have a save your ass kit on your LR3, LR4, if you have an oversized tire, right here is the exact reason. We're a touch low on clearance all the way around, even on this side. But interestingly enough, parked this thing overnight. It was aired up when I started it, went to back down the driveway, and it dumped all the air. And now we're here. So let's hook the scan tool up and see what we're dealing with. So we got a couple of level sensors. Well, two of them permanently faulting out, two intermittent. Um, that would make all four. Let's uh, clear it out and see what happens here. And the beep means it just faulted out. And we have the right front. Come on, focus. And the rear left that aren't reading. That gives us a little bit of an explanation as to why the Land Rover's laid out more than C10. Got a couple level sensors here that had laying around in the parts bin collection. Uh, let me run the part numbers, see what we're working with. Pretty much guessing that it'll be for the two that aren't causing issues right now. That's about how it goes. Just on the old Google, and you wouldn't believe it, we have one front 
one rear. So at least with these around, we can do some easy troubleshooting. I'll just swap the sensor and see if that goes away. This is the lazy way of diagnosing something. Sometimes it's all right to be lazy. All right, you're probably not gonna be able to see, but back up in there, I just unplugged the sensor that was on the LR4 and plugged in the other one I had laying around. It's not hooked up to the control arm or anything, but I just wanted to see what would happen. Then went in and cleared out the codes and we'll get it to focus. And look it, we're down to just the rear left height sensor faulting out. So I guess I'll toss both the sensors in, but that's an odd situation. How do two sensors take a crap at the same exact time? Not quite convinced on that, but let's see. Well, with one plugged in, but not hooked up, it kind of airs up. We might be able to roll it into somewhere more convenient than a hill to take the wheel off. See if we can rip some flares off. You just can't really turn much, but we'll get it. Well, that is a much better place for that to be. Don't you think, Sasha? What was with all the commotion? A little rubby rubby on the way in, but we just popped the flare off a little bit, just a little. But now we have a flat surface and I can jack this up in a little less sketchy manner than half on the driveway on a hill. Probably wouldn't have ended well. So I like this a whole lot more. We're gonna rip that wheel off and this wheel off and see if we can get the old budget LR4 back in the air. The next video was gonna be hitch related on this. Got a, got a trip coming up. Hopefully we can sort this situation out because building the hitch wouldn't do a whole lot of good if it's sitting like that. So there is our level sensor that is apparently bad. Here's the new one just uh, plugged in and that was good enough to get it aired up to move. So we'll pop this guy out now. We will have to switch over our rods there. And right there you can see the length difference and that is what makes up our two and a half inch lift on this guy. So we gotta make sure to put that back on. It would look awful goofy with one corner lower. So on the rear, I don't need to pop the wheel off. Right back here is the level sensor. So I'm gonna replace that. You won't be able to see it because I'll be in the way, but I promise I'm doing it. There's the old one. Should just work now, right? Guaranteed. Well, as you can see, that obviously worked well. So the fault for the right front is gone now. We still have the left rear fault, but now we have the left front as well. So I'm gonna have to dig into this a little more because obviously it's not just a sensor going on. There's something goofy happening. I know that's surprising because Land Rovers would never do anything goofy. Well, I can't exactly say that's what I had planned for today, but at least we got somewhere on the Defender. Originally the next video was planned to be building a high clearance trailer hitch for the LR4, but being it doesn't even move, that might get put on the back burner unless we get that sorted out. 
but I'm not gonna bore you in me wasting hours of my life doing that. I will keep you updated and we'll film the fix if we get to that point. Now that we got the front end back off the Defender, we'll get those floors in and this will open up some room to get the wiring back going, especially the engine harness on this 430 horsepower LS3 V8. Appreciate you guys watching, appreciate you subscribing, and we will catch you on the next one. It's gonna be something, not quite sure yet. And in other news, got this neat old desk. Kind of just looks like an old desk, but we are going to refinish this guy and we'll use it somewhere in the shop. This happens to be the desk that was in my grandpa's and my dad's used car lot from like the early 70s. How cool is that? Now we'll be part of the shop here at the ranch. I don't think there's a better place for it. And little girl Sasha has an x-ray tomorrow. We haven't been moving too great lately, so we're gonna see if we can get that figured out because we need our site supervisor back in action at full capacity.